we've got a lot of new products that we're talking about. Uh, you know, some of the exciting ones that we're, uh, we're uh, launching literally this spring are Roundup Ready to Yield, and uh, you know, that's going to be a, a step change over our first generation Roundup Ready with uh, a 7 to 11 percent yield benefit. And for a soybean grower, that's, that's a huge deal because, uh, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's more gain in yield than they would normally see in 10 years of breeding. So it's all going to come in that, uh, that one new uh, trade package, and there's a lot of interest there. And I think the other aspect of uh, soybean that uh, is really worth pointing out is, you know, unlike corn where we've had triple stacks and multiple genes, soybeans had Roundup Ready for, since 1996. But we've been able to take all of these breeding and biotechnology tools that were originally applied in corn, and now we've done the same thing in soybean. And so in the next few years, you know, in, in, in addition to launching Roundup Ready to Yield this year, we'll launch dicamba tolerance, another herbicide trait that's going to be very valuable in soybean. We've got a yield gene coming in soybean. We've got a really exciting set of consumer traits that will allow us to change the oil quality of soybean and make it look virtually like olive oil, which will be big for the food industry and, and a consumer health benefit. So there's a lot of technology coming in soybean, and we'll have multiple genes. And that's one of the reasons, I think, you know, as we thought into the future, you know, we need to rethink about how we brand these because you just can't be pasting, you know, logos like on a race car, you know, and, and try to have the growers make sense and, and easily understand what's going on. So the, the whole branding approach is really to position us to anticipate and, and, you know, as we bring more and more technology in that bag of seed, make it easy for growers to understand what's there to simplify that, uh, that seed purchase decision. So you know, that would be the, the big event tonight is launching a whole new branding, branding strategy so it becomes really genuity, roundup ready to yield soybeans, and then platform of other traits that will go with it. And then on the corn front, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of technology being applied. Our triple stack corn is the biggest selling product in the corn uh, marketplace and you know, has provided uh, a lot of yield benefits and uh, convenience to the, to the growers. But in corn, by next year, we'll be in a position to start launching uh, corn that has now eight genes, you know, more and better corn borer, rootworm, and, uh, and weed control traits. And uh, again, you know, we'll be adding to that the drought and the yield and the nitrogen use genes. So again, rethinking that branding approach, we'll be moving to, uh, you know, a Genuity Smart Stacks platform with ways of differentiating drought tolerance, nitrogen use, and some of the other trait benefits. And you'll hear all about that tonight at the, uh, at the program, but that's a, that's a big announcement for us here at the uh, event. And then I, I think the other point, so, you know, that, that we've focused on as a company, we've taken about a year to try to put all this together because there's a huge amount of technology coming. Uh, you know, when I give talks, you know, you, know you, can spend, you can spend a whole talk talking about, you know, grain prices and biofuels and global warming and food security and are we producing too much corn or not enough and there's a lot of complexity obviously on the business and commercial side but on the technology side there's just so much stuff going on in terms of the new breeding advances and the new hybrids you know the new trait combinations the new seed treatments and so we we try to pull all that together to give both growers and the industry and regulators a way of thinking about how you know the yields in corn and soybean and cotton are going to change as a result of this because it's important for policy decisions for you know how much corn can you use for biofuels a whole lot of considerations and basically what you know working with a lot of the experts in the industry and other companies you know we, we've concluded that there is a path to double yields in corn soybean and cotton from the year 2000 by 2030. And so we think it's going to be possible to see, you know, 300 bushel average in corn by 2030, 80 bushel average in, uh, in soybeans, you know, and four and a half, five bale cotton on average by, uh, by, uh, by 2030. And, and what's really going on here when you dig into it deeper is these new techniques for, braid, for breeding have literally changed the genetic base in these crops. And so the corn and soybean and cotton crops that we're planting today are very different than they were even three or four or five years ago. 
And then you've got these new traits that are going to boost yield, and they're going to add to it. And then the combination of the new breeding and the new traits enables you to plant more corn plants in that acre. You know, you can increase the populations. You know, there's new seed treatments and, and fungicides and insecticides that are possible to put on the seed. They're going to boost yields. And it's really the combination of the breeding, the biotech, and the agronomic improvements that are going to open the door for some pretty phenomenal yield gains over the next 20 years. And that's a, a whole part of this, uh, this story. And I think the, the environmental benefit of all that is if we're able to farm the best lands with higher productivity, then that puts less pressure on you know, taking land out of CRP or you know, erosion of wetlands or, or farming land that shouldn't be farmed. And that's good for the environment. And uh, we actually think that you know, by bringing all these tools and using them effectively, that that bushel of corn that we grow and produce in 2030, or that bushel of soybeans, can be produced using a third less inputs, you know, a third less water, a third less pesticide, a third less fertilizer, and that's great for everybody when you think about, you know, uh, the environment and, uh, and, you know, the impact that, uh, that agriculture has. And so uh, you know, that's a, that sort of ties it all together. And then the, the last piece of our sustainable uh, yield initiative, besides the doubling yields and reducing the input per, uh, per bushel by a third, is to ensure that farmers around the world have access to the technology. And, you know, you know, in the early days, you know, there were, you know, were biotech acceptance challenges, and you're familiar with that. But, you know, today, you know, you know this technology has been in the marketplace for 12 years. You know, there's now 25 countries planting biotech crops. It's nearly 20% of the world's farmland is using this technology. But there are some parts of the world, like Africa, that need technology for agriculture very badly that haven't put the systems in place to use it. So we're working very closely with uh, African institutions, with the Gates Foundation, to bring some of this important technology like drought tolerance you know, to corn production in Africa where it's, uh, it's so critical. And so uh, the last part of our initiative is to make sure that small farmers, resource poor farmers in uh, third world countries have an ability to get access to the technology. So those are the three key elements of our, uh, of our initiative that I think bring together the need for production, for production efficiency, the need for agriculture to be sensitive to global warming and environmental impact, and use these tools appropriately to reduce that impact and to make sure that there's, there's not a have and have not situation where it's only the, the wealthy farmer who has the access but that small farmers in countries that desperately need to increase self-sufficiency of food production can also use these tools.